What's up guys? So how many of you guys saw this video? Okay, it's gonna have to hit like a truck here. Then you get super, super excited like I did, only for this to happen when you try it. Right. Okay, maybe, maybe one more. Come on. All right. Really? You can't be bloody... All right, that then. All right, got one down. Hopefully we get one more attack. Well, fortunately, I'm here today with the solution. I have a 100% consistent win ratio with just a few tiny tweaks. And you know how we're going to do this? We're going to lower the health and the crit damage. Let's do this. Right, so I just got done extensively testing this Grievous team. We've tried the crit damage triangle on Grievous. We tried the health primary triangle on Grievous. Hasn't really made a difference. We've tried HK lead. We've tried 88's lead. And still, it's just loss after loss after loss. I don't know if the Malik that I'm facing is particularly tough or something. But um, yeah, it's like 0 and 50 at this point. I've, I've done everything I can think of and it just constantly loses it is just not consistent at all this is the same problem i had before i had to actually put probe droid in in an original video back when malik first came to actually beat these teams because this version just didn't work then either however there is a french creator called cador water just had to read that probably completely botched your name if i have i'm sorry um but he's actually stumbled onto something here because it doesn't really matter if you have a crit damage triangle if you don't crit so I'm going to show you what I'm doing and what is actually working. It blows my mind. This is working every single time. Let's load up gear 13 Grievous. As you can see, crit chance. What? Here's the health at 101k. I had this up to 121 previously with a crit damage primary and a health primary. It didn't make a difference. It just wasn't killing people. I'll probably be airing little clips of, of battles that happened and it went on forever. It got really tedious and I was actually about to write this off as completely ineffective. But here we're having a crit chance primary. Still got a fair bit of speed on it. Um, and just to complete the crit chance set. Now this under HK's lead because you're going to get 30% additional crit chance from HK. You only get 20 from 88. So if you're using 88, you actually have to have Grievous's crit chance somewhere in the in the low 70s, I believe it is. I've got mine up to 68 here. You can see there's no additional crit chance coming. Although again, HK actually gives us more of that, whereas 88 doesn't. Um, and it's just working beautifully. Let me go into a battle and show you how this works. There is a specific turn order you want to do and a couple of things you have to avoid doing in battle. And I'll explain those in the battle itself. Wait for this game to load. Right, here we go. First, you're going to wiggle with BB. We're going to use the AoE of HK. Then we're going to try one AoE of Grievous. We're not going to kill anyone here. We're likely going to get feared. That's usually what happens. There we go. All right, L3 is just there to soak up damage. So we just use that move and now we're going to use the big special with t3 this is going to put more debuffs around and remove some right we'll let them do their thing they're going to now beat the life out of us no doubt and what we have to look out for is corrupt battle meditation on grievous if we have that we are not i repeat we are not going to actually use his big aoe attack come on you might be wondering why I healed a, uh, BB there. It's simply to allow more ferocity to build up. Now we've got Corrupt Battle and Meditation, so we're not going to use the AoE. What we're going to use is this move instead. If we use the AoE, it basically does no damage at all. You have to be really, really lucky to land crit hits when you have that. Right, now we're going to use the AoE. We've got a decent bunch of ferocity on because of the way we played it. And we're not corrupt battle meditation on us whatsoever. We've got a crit chance set. Now watch this. Boom. Everybody dead. This happens every time I play this. I can't believe how, how fantastically this works. I'll show you the, the Malik that we're facing. This is the one that we're going up against. 
and that the, the Arnold method just did not work for me at all. Uh, 122, we've got a fair bit of health protection. Let's go back in just to show you this is not cherry picked. I don't do those videos and I can't stress how much I try to show you something that is absolutely viable. When they're not viable, oh, well, I'm, I'm just not going to make a video on it. Or I'm going to make a video exposing that it's not viable. Um, and that was almost what was about to happen to the, the previous way of running Grievous. I mean, I'm one of the people that went out and started gearing him. I was like, wow, this is this is another option for me. This is a this is a great, great team. I was so excited. And I just couldn't get it to work properly. Yeah, you know, I'd get like a win um, towards the end after making a few tweaks, but most of the time it was a constant loss. You know, I would pull out one win and I'd lose another 10. That's not viable. No point doing the heal there because we had shock on BB. I'll right, just do that again. Let them do their thing. Right. We, we got corrupt battle meditation again, so we're not using that AoE. Let's use this one. Let's get rid of it. Now, this is a pretty fast bastler, I have to admit. So sometimes it goes back on, and you have to do that move twice. All right, here we go. Boom! Everybody dead once again. Okay, you've seen how successful it is. I'm going to show you one of these battles that I had earlier on in which we couldn't actually shake the corrupted battle meditation. And the reason it's important to shake this is because it actually reduces your crit chance by 30%. Um, if you're not using a crit chance set, that's a really, really low probability of landing those big hits that you need to be able to kill Malak. That's why we're leaving it. Um, in this one, it actually stayed on me for two turns. It's because I'm facing a pretty quick Bastler. I think she's about 140, 150 speed, something like that and i'll show you that it still works okay i've done that that uh, second special once we're gonna have to do it another time here and here we go boom out of here amazing this is just a beautiful team what i'm gonna do now is show you all the mods as well Okay, let's go through these mods to show you that this was not some case of me being god modded and my opponent being pure trash. It's, it's really not that type of thing. Um, let me show you on HK. I went for offense rather than the crits because we're actually using this grenade here and that does true damage so it can't crit. Um, and he's not really going to get another turn. He was at 112. Does not need to be that fast. It's worth noting. It's worth noting that I'm pretty sure um, Arnold's was somewhere in the 80s or 90s or something like that. But yeah, he does not need to be that quick. Uh, next, Grievous. Obviously, you're going to want his unique Zeta. That's an absolute requirement. It's going to be the reason you're going to get so many turns. You do not need the leadership one, obviously, because he ain't going to be your leader. Um, and here, as I showed you earlier, only 77 speed. The health's at 101, which for gear 13 is actually quite low because the priority is the crit chance. Getting that up into, I think it has to be somewhere around 66, something like that. Um, and, then, and then you're you're going to be absolutely fine. I, I went for 68 just because that's what happened to be on my mods. Um, you don't need additional crit damage. You do not need that. Um, the arrow I had on health, not much speed as you can see. Crit chance primary on that one. Now, BB. I think BB had a little bit of speed to him. Yeah, 123. I'm sure a lot of you got a lot faster than that. But once again, it doesn't need to be this quick. 100 will do the job. As long as BB goes first, that's all that matters. And he doesn't have to be modded faster than the Revan team to go first. So, um, yeah, that's... That's a pretty standard BB right there. Um, I haven't bothered going the usual route. Obviously, when you're with resistance, he will have speed and crit chance for exposes. Doesn't need that. Put health on him. Um, you're going to want... Let's have a look. Do we need actually any of these Zetas? Nope. Um, that one would be handy. So yeah, self-preservation protocol. You're not going to need roll with the punches. And I believe it's this one which will cause a taunt with the Omega. So make sure you have the Omega. With T3, we're going to preferably want both Zetas. This one here is going to give you the defense penetration for droids. That's going to be incredibly handy. And this one here also spreads more crit hit chance around and stuff like that. So would be beneficial to have. I know it really does suck. You're going to have to invest quite a bit in T3. Um, but you don't have to invest in his mods, as you can see. Just 64 speed. And in, in all honesty, I don't even need a speed set on him. I could have just done this with health. And we've got just protection primaries. Nothing remotely special. I mean, some of them don't even have speed. And the last final member, Elfrey. Let's go find her. Right. 
75 speed really not that fast and in honestly it doesn't even need to be that quick i think arnold did it with 59 something like that that would be fine because she's not really there to even take a move she's there to kind of stand there and just take some more damage but not die too quick because a lot of droids are very very soft and you don't really want all the droids dying at the same time that's about the only way this team can really go wrong um and what did i do primary wise i think i just whacked protection all over yeah that seems to be what i did even the even the arrow was protection as for the opponent let me check out the important speeds the only the only ones that really matter are these three because it doesn't matter how slow they are like they cause problems and they've got different jobs revan was at 155 and you're comparing that to the speeds we were running and you know with what 60s and stuff like that so that we had loads of headroom to attempt to catch up if for whatever reason we face the 170 daft revum we've got plenty of room to add an additional 20 onto our mods um and let's have a look at bastila she was quite quick she was causing problems and putting extra corrupted battle mutation on 141 so again even if they had an extra 30 on her we've got so much more headroom um and malik Lastly, we saw earlier it was about 150k combined health pull plus 122 on speed and he had defense sets to make it even more awkward to get through him, which is probably why the um, initial Arnold tactic wasn't working for me. Being able to just spray and pray didn't work at all for me against this guy. So that's it guys. Thank you for watching the video. Please check out Kador's original video as well. At least go give him the view. It was him that came up with this crazy idea to take off health and critical damage. Um, I, I wouldn't have really even considered doing that. So uh, big shout out to him for that one. And it really does work. And the best news yet, I've had this confirmed since recording the video in a couple of DMs. It works against gear 13 Malak as well. I mean, come on, you got to give this a go. I'm really, really, once again, excited to get my Grievous up to gear 13 and give this a go. I was very, very deflated after doing some of the original testing and finding the, the spray and pray method didn't work at all. This does. This actually works. So thank you for watching the video, guys. Give me the old thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Consider subscribing to my channel as well. And until next time, we out of here.